It is a pleasure to be able to worship with you today on Sunday, August the 30th. Well, today we would normally on the, on the last Sunday of August be down at St. Peter's in North Augusta. We'd have a regional service down there and afterwards we'd have a big potluck dinner at the community center. We're not able to have that potluck, but I thought in the spirit of that regional service, we would head down to St. Peter's today to conduct our service. So why don't we head there now? Well, welcome to St. Peter's in North Augusta. It is a pleasure to have you here to worship with today. Let us take a moment of holy silence as we prepare our minds and hearts to worship our Lord. I wait for the Lord in his word, I hope. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come, let us worship God, our King. Holy God, Holy Almighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. Amen. I invite you to say the psalm with me responsibly by the half verse. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. So I will bless you as long as I live. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness. When I remember you upon my bed. For I, you have been my helper my soul clings to you. And we'll have the first reading. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush doesn't burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him, from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet 
for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up from that land to a good land and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place, the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, <coughs> and they say unto me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving, and telling all your wondrous deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the place where your glory abides. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are more standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom the gospel of Christ.
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And bowing our heads for a moment, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day to worship you, to center our lives on you, and Lord, to come into a place to hear from you. We desire your truth to enter our minds and hearts, not just to know it, Lord, and to know you, but also to transform our lives. We want to be more like you. So, Lord, we pray now and invite your Holy Spirit to be present with us as we hear from your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I just love walking through these Old Testament readings with you, uh, looking at God's uh, redemption story one piece at a time. Well, last week we looked at, uh, at the story of Moses. We heard about how the greatest uh, hater of the Hebrew people ended up uh, taking care of this little Hebrew boy. Uh, Pharaoh's daughter took, had the little baby Moses taken care of and also paid for Moses' mother to nurse him. Moses grew up. As a prince of Egypt, he had the finest clothing, the best food, and, and absolutely the best education that he possibly could have. That's where we left Moses today in the reading that we had. We find Moses, he's, uh, he's 40 years old now. He's left Egypt. Um, he's, he's gone to live in Midian where he's met a woman that he's married and he's had children. And now he's a shepherd. He's out uh, tending his father-in-law's flocks. And that's where we find Moses today out tending the flocks uh, out in the field in Midian. Pretty, uh, pretty um, desert-like uh, environment. So here is Moses out tending his flocks. He's going along and he looks up to see the mountain of the Lord. And on that mountain, he sees something that is astonishing. He stops and, and stares, kind of does a double take. And he sees what he can only describe as a bush, which is on fire, but it's not being consumed. And so he turns aside to investigate what's going on with this bush. Now, the Lord sees Moses turn aside. He sees that Moses is coming near. So he says, Moses, Moses. Now remember, Moses is 40 years old. He has not heard the voice of God. He's not heard the voice of God. This is the first time he's hearing from God the Father. Moses, Moses, God the Father says. And Moses says, I'm here. And God the Father says to him, take off your sandals, for this, this is holy ground. Now, Moses taking off his sandals has some significance to it, and it's God calling a particular place holy. As in, um, this place right here, this area, this territory, I am setting apart. This is not to be used for common use anymore. I'm setting this apart for something particular, for something that I want to do specifically. This land has a purpose, and I'm setting it aside. And so God sets this land aside to commission Moses, to reveal who he is to Moses, and then to commission him. So Moses got to remove his shoes. Now, I don't know about you. When you take your shoes off when you're at the beach, if you had a chance to go to the beach this summer, it's glorious to feel the sand between your toes. But if someone asked you to take your shoes off going on a, on a hike in the woods, you'd think they were crazy. Because shoes enable us to move over various terrain without hurting ourselves. I mean, shoes are necessary to be active outside in the world. We know this physically. They are important. But there's also a spiritual dimension to the, the putting on and the taking off of shoes. We see Paul talk to the Ephesians about shoes when he says, put on the full armor of God, and he lists all the different um, pieces of the armor of God we're to put on. But at the very end, he doesn't neglect the feet. He says, make sure your feet are fit that you may proclaim the gospel. In other words, you need to have shoes on so you're active and ready to go out and preach the gospel. In order to be ready, you have to have shoes on to be active. So God is saying here to Moses, take your shoes off. No action is taking place here. You're going to be in a place of submission, a place of vulnerability, and a place of humility. And so Moses takes his shoes off, and then God continues. God says to him, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And I imagine as he says that, Moses remembers every story that the Hebrew people have told him that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and how God interacted in their lives. And Moses is suddenly overwhelmed and covers up his face. 
because he is afraid of who this God is. God continues and God says, I have heard the cry of my people from Egypt. I just love this. If you ever wonder if God is, is passionate, just listen to this. I have heard my people's cry. This tells us two things. One, God's people have been crying out to him. And two, God's been listening. God's like, Moses, I've heard them crying. I've heard their tears, Moses. I'm not deaf. My ears aren't stopped up. I haven't gone out for lunch. I, I'm not binge watching Netflix. I am listening to my people and I care about my people and I'm responding to my people. And Moses, I am sending you to do something about this. I'm going to free my people. <laughs> Moses is like, uh, uh, me? Lord, I know you're supposed to be omniscient and everything, but um, the reason I left Egypt in the first place is because Pharaoh wanted to kill me. So I don't think it's a good idea to send me back to talk to Pharaoh. God says to Moses, I will be with you. And Moses is like, oh, well, but I can't talk to the Israelite people. What am I supposed to say to them? I, I, what, who am I supposed to say sent me? And this is this critical place in Scripture. The first time we hear in Scripture the name of God. Okay, um, you can call me many different things uh, in, in uh, church life. Uh, I could be called uh, Father Robert. I could be called Father Porter. I could be called Reverend Rob, Reverend Bob, um, Pastor Porter, all sorts of different names. Uh, but my name is Robert. That's who I am. That identifies my personhood. Well, when God responds, he actually gives his proper name. He says this. This is the, the, the way that he is distinguished to say this is who I am and this is who I am not. He says, I am Yahweh. Now, that, that name Yahweh is, is uh, derived uh, from the words I am. God says to Moses, you want to know what my name is, Moses? I'll tell you what my name is. My name is Yahweh. I am the great I am. Moses, I have no production date stamped on me, nor do I have an expiration date stamped on me. I am constant through all time. And everything that you see and everything you don't even know about yet, I created it. But I'm totally other than everything that I have created. And I don't need any of it. I don't need anyone or any, anything. But everything depends on me for its life. Moses, I am the great I am. I am the hallmark. I am the, the source, the absolute authority on what is true, what is good, and what is loving, what is beautiful. I am the source. I am the fountain of all of these things. I am the great I am. Everything good and pure and holy comes from me. And Moses, I don't need you and I don't need your people. But Moses, I choose you and I choose your people. I will rescue my people out of Egypt. I will give my people the law. And then I will rescue them from the law by the shed blood of my son, Jesus Christ. I choose you and I will rescue you. Yahweh. The great I am, constant through all of history. The one who is other than and yet draws close to us. This name Yahweh is the name that reminds us that God has a personal relationship with us. He's not just some universal cosmic intelligence. He knows each of us individually and chooses us. Before the foundation of the world, God chose Moses and the Israelites. Before God started time, he chose Moses and the Israelites. Thanks be to God that we can worship this, oh, this supreme being, Yahweh, who knows us, chooses us, and saves us. Amen. I invite you to, you to say with me the hero Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. And we'll have the prayers of the people. For the prayers of the people... Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for this country and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development, especially as they are starting back to school. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. We would like to lift up especially those who have asked for our prayer. We pray for Doug, Mitchell, Kylie, Joyce, Lucas, Joy, Anita, Steve, Angie, Julie, Adrian, Nancy, Cindy, Beth, Karen, Joan, Sarah, Connie, Linda, Sarah and Philip, Dave, Michelle, Donnelly, Douglas, Sarah, Erica, Nigel, Avalon, Hal, Verna, Grenville, George, Darian, Jean, Wallace, Deanna, Monica, George, India, Cathay, Nancy, Barbara, Ted, David, Brother David Allen, and Louise. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, ma martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, hear our prayer. And the prayer for today. Author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, Yahweh. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us in all goodness, and of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Normally, we would head out the door and down to the community center for some, some delicious uh, potluck. So we're not able to do that today. But I just encourage you to reach out to those uh, around you to remind them uh, that you are praying for them and that God, that God loves them. God bless you. May you have a blessed day. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen.